What's up friends and happy almost Thanksgiving. Obviously I'm here to do a little Thanksgiving food video. I feel like because I've done like a few cooking or like food making type of videos now, I'm starting to get like a little bit better at it. So my confidence has grown in my chef skills basically. So what will we be making today? Well, I figured I would do like a main, a side, and then a dessert since that's like a full course meal thing. It's kind of a lot for like me, but I'm gonna honestly like eat it for like the rest of the week as like my meal prep, kind of. Actually, it'll probably only last me like three days, but whatever. So for the main, I'm gonna do like a roast cauliflower thing. For the side, I'm gonna do a cornbread. And then for dessert, I'm going to do a crustless pumpkin pie. And all of these are actually recipes from different bloggers. I'll probably like never make up my own recipe because like baking and cooking is like a weird science in my brain. But I love searching for like the best, easiest, still great looking recipe from all of the different bloggers. So that's why you can't just count on like one blogger. I do have some favorites, but also like sometimes other people have ones with like simpler ingredients or ones that take less time. So that's why you come to my channel because I did the research for you. All right, so the cauliflower roast thing takes the most amount of time, so I'm gonna start with that one. And this is from carissasvegankitchen.com. So it has a gravy, cauliflower, and then like extra vegetables along the outside. So I'm gonna start with the gravy while I have the oven preheating at 450, which is like super high, I feel, but whatever. So can you guys like see how crazy my kitchen is? This has never been a thing for me. I have never made this much food at once before. Like I'm actually kind of nervous. My heart is like beating, like something could go terribly wrong, honestly. So I have this pot for the gravy. So it says to mix together all of the ingredients for the gravy, except for the cornstarch and water into the pot and bring it to a boil. So, already spilling stuff. We're gonna start right here with three cups of veggie stock. So I'm gonna use up the rest of this one. It's uh, Trader Joe's brand, which I'm almost out of. So that was a little less than one cup. And then I'm gonna open this new one from Jewel, which is just Organics brand and measure out the rest here. Okay, then one third cup of soy sauce. I'm actually going to be use liquid aminos, which is like, I guess, a healthier version of soy sauce. According to who, I don't really know, but I believe most things. So one third cup coming right up. Next, one tablespoon of maple syrup, which is optional for sweetness, but I like sweet, so one tablespoon coming right up. Okay, and then it says that you can add three tablespoons of vegan Worcestershire sauce. I never know how to say that. And apparently there's vegan versions because some of them have like anchovies and shiz in it. But I didn't buy that and it says it's optional, so whatever. And then there's like five seasonings, which, you know, I just don't have the largest collection of seasonings yet. I'm trying to grow it, but they're kind of expensive if you don't get them from the dollar store, which I've mentioned in my vlogs before. Um, the closest one to me here in Chicago is like five miles away, so I only go when I'm in like the Burbs or at home in Pekin. So I have a few of these. So the first one is garlic powder, two tablespoons of that, which I don't have garlic powder, but I have garlic and herb. I feel like it can't make that big of a difference, so I'm going for it. Not a lot left though, so. One, two. And then two tablespoons of onion powder, which I don't have. One tablespoon. You guys, I just did tablespoons and it's supposed to be teaspoons. I feel like garlic and like herb can't make that big of a difference if I did like a shit ton extra, can it? Ugh, I'm literally an idiot. Okay, I'm gonna, you know, have more attention to detail the rest of this. 
two teaspoons of onion powder, which I don't have, one teaspoon of parsley. I think I do have that. Yeah, but I'm not gonna measure that out. I'm just gonna give it a little pinch. Okay, that seems good. Three fourths teaspoon of thyme, also don't have that. And sage, also don't have that. One teaspoon of smoked paprika. Don't have that either, but I do have normal paprika. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just do like a dash. All right. And then bring this to a boil. So I'm just gonna like put it over here. Can you still see me? Barely. So I have that on high boiling. I should probably like mix it together too, so. Let's do that. Now I'm supposed to mix cornstarch and water next to add to the gravy eventually, but I don't have cornstarch, so I'm using oat flour instead, which I think is no big deal. I guess we'll find out later. I just found a lid and I don't know what it goes to. That could be a problem. I'll keep it. Okay. Oh, actually it went to my, my old veggie broth that I already used. So, five tables. Oh, I totally forgot. So I actually bought mushrooms to add to the gravy. You guys, I am all over the place. I apologize. But I like the gravy to have like the mushroom taste with it, even though it doesn't call for it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be cool and add some extras. Okay. I added some mushrooms to the mix. It was supposed to be like rounded up mushrooms. and I didn't do that. So hopefully it's like still okay. And like, just like a sauce because it doesn't have to be like a mashed potato gravy or like a biscuits and gravy. It's more of just like a sauce to like spread onto the cauliflower and around the vegetables. So I'm thinking it'll be okay. Okay, let's mix five tablespoons, for real tablespoons this time, of the flour, it's supposed to be cornstarch, whatever. And then half a cup of water. And then I just mix this up. And then once the gravy starts to like boil, I'm supposed to slowly add that in. Okay, so while that's boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and get like the pan ready for everything else. So I'm just using this like, I don't know, normal sheet pan thing. And then you're supposed to take the cauliflower and like cut off the bottom part and all of like the green leaves and then place that on the pan. And then it actually says that you're supposed to chop up four large carrots and four medium potatoes. But because I'm simple, um, I instead bought this bag of vegetables for roasting with potatoes, carrots, the two ones I need, and additional onions and zucchini. So I feel like I'm just making it extra good and it's like not any less healthy just because it's in a bag. Plus like, don't those look amazing? Like I had to buy it. Way easier than chopping up shit on my own too. I could never open anything. Are you kidding? Oh, there we go. So I'm just gonna spread this around the pan. By the way, this is the Picked Sweet Farms brand. And because I still have some like room on the pan, I'm gonna add some more mushrooms. So I still have like a lot left that I didn't add into the gravy. Okay, so the pan has come to a boil, so I'm supposed to remove it from heat while slowly whisking in this like flour water mix and then put it back on heat. Okay, so I poured it in, but I'm gonna continue to stir so it doesn't like clump up where the flour is for a little bit. And I placed it back on heat. I feel like this one's pretty hard to mess up. Like it looks real good already. Also, I just realized I forgot to add one fourth teaspoon of pepper, but I feel like that's no big deal, so I'll do it now. Wigucci. Next step is to pour some of the gravy on the inside of the cauliflower, then flip it over and like paint more on it and add some to the pan with the vegetables along with more veggie stock if it's like not already covered. So I don't have like a cooking brush, but I have an art supply brush. Is this a bad idea? Probably. Am I gonna get poisoned by some kind of like invisible paint left over on here? Probably. Am I gonna use it anyway? Absolutely. So let's start with the inside of the cauliflower. I'm literally just gonna like pour from the pot and hopefully not burn myself. Okay, 
Okay, that wasn't so bad. Now I'm gonna flip it over and paint. Okay, this is totally working like probably a normal cooking brush. I don't even need to buy one. That was smart of me. Save money. I'm literally probably one of the cheapest humans ever. Okay, and then I'm gonna like pour the remaining with the mushrooms into the pan. All right. This is seeming really, like this is, seems really good. I feel like this is gonna be a win, guys. I'm gonna show it to you real quick. So obviously the cauliflower, look at that steam. Isn't like all white anymore because I brushed it and then I have all of those like roasted veggies and mushrooms added onto the pan. And then I'm supposed to cover it with aluminum foil and then bake it. Okay, I'm not good at this shit either, but I'm just gonna half-ass it. Okay, not that bad. Cover the dish tightly. I also didn't add extra like veggie broth in there because like the gravy covered my pan. Oh, I was supposed to save some of the gravy to brush it again halfway. Oops, can't make that big of a difference. Okay, so I bake for a total of 70 minutes. I'm supposed to like, you know, do that thing halfway through, but I'm not going to, so I'm just gonna bake it for 70 minutes. I need to start a timer. Okay. 7.45 is when that'll be done. That's a long time from now. Whatever, we may be done with a lot of those ingredients, but I'm just gonna push them to the side because a lot of them like overlap and I don't wanna mess up. So next we're gonna make the cornbread. This is from frommybowl.com, which is also where I did my vegan candy video from. Okay, so I need one cup of medium grind cornmeal. It's optional to use medium grind or whatever kind you want. Medium grind is just her personal favorite. So I'm just using this yellow cornmeal from Quaker Oats. So I take one cup of this, pour it in my mixing bowl. I actually am gonna put this to the side because I don't need that anymore for sure's. Um, and then mix that with flour. Again, I'm using oat flour because that's all I like ever use. And it's one cup of flour. And then also baking powder, which is two teaspoons, which I actually already measured out in here. I'm just using like double acting baking powder. I don't know, like something typical. And pour that in. A fourth teaspoon of turmeric, which sounds like nothing. So I'm just gonna do a tiny dash. And then some salt, a teaspoon. Again, I'm just gonna do a little bit, I guess. And then mix this all together. So this isn't anything exciting, it just looks like yellow powder. Okay, and then in a blender, I need to take one cup of white beans with two tablespoons of water until it makes a smooth puree type of form. So I just have this organic cannelli cannellini beans. I guess there's a ton of like types of white beans, so I just kind of chose one at Jewel. And we're gonna go blend this. Ew. Okay, that looks smooth to me. And then I need to add this in a different bowl. And then mix that with two tablespoons of maple syrup. And then it says to add two flax eggs, but I don't have flax seeds. And apparently for every flax egg or egg, you can replace it with one fourth cup of applesauce. So I'm gonna add half a cup of applesauce to this. I just have this great value unsweetened kind. One tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, which I'm almost out of. This is just Signature Kitchen's brand. Basically every brand I use is typically the cheapest. One cup of unsweetened plant milk. So, so I'm gonna use um, unsweetened cashew milk. I actually prefer it over almond milk, interesting fact. Ooh, my bowl's getting really full. 
Okay, then I'm just gonna stir all of the what ingredients. Oh my God, I'm gonna like spill because this bowl is so full. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this into the dry ingredients. The milk isn't mixing that well, but I'm gonna pour it anyway, otherwise I'm gonna spill. Then I'm gonna use the whisk to mix this up. Mmm. Okay, this looks good and I just tried a little bit and it actually tastes good. Okay, proud so far. Okay, and then it says to pour it into a greased or lined nine by nine baking pan and then put it in the oven for 27 to 30 minutes. But I wanna make like muffins instead of like a pan. Mostly because I'm actually taking these to work tomorrow for like a chili cook off. So I bought these like cute little like disposable ones. But I'm not sure how to like pour it in those. I think I'm just gonna like scoop with a cup. Ooh, just water, no big deal. Um, and then pour. Not sure how many it's gonna make, but don't really care. Oh yeah, this cup is working good. I guess I didn't really explain very well why I'm putting them in these for people for work instead of like the pan, because I could still cut it up and take it to work. The reason is because I want to try it myself. And if I made it in a big pan and cut it into pieces and then a whole chunk was missing because I ate one, that might be a little bit embarrassing. So I feel like this is a better alternative. Because no one will notice if a muffin is missing. Probably won't like serve them in these trays. Okay, that was pretty perfect. It filled up like two of these exactly, so I'll have 12 muffins which I guess is a little weird if I bring 11 to work tomorrow, but I don't give a frick. So I'm gonna put these in the oven for like 27-ish minutes. Hopefully it's no big deal that they're in here with this like roast. All right, moving on to the dessert. The pumpkin pie with no crust. Okay, I'm sure we're gonna need a big mixing bowl again, which I don't have. So the next biggest thing I have for a mixing bowl is this big Tupperware container. Okay, I need one 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. So I just have great value and 100% pumpkin and it is 15 ounces. So I'm gonna put this whole can in my mixing Tupperware. Okay, got that. Okay, and then it says three fourth cups plus two tablespoons of milk of choice and then two tablespoons of oil. Or if you don't wanna use oil, you just up the milk to an, a whole cup. So I'm gonna do that instead. Again, using the silk cashew milk. Let's pour a cup. I need two and a half teaspoons, not tablespoons, of vanilla extract. One, two, Optional, one tablespoon of ground flax or cornstarch. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, it says one third cup of maple syrup or sugar. I'll be gonna use maple syrup. And then a pinch of uncut stevia or two additional tablespoons of sugar. I'm just instead gonna add a little bit more syrup, I guess. This is actually sugar-free syrup, but that means it's probably made with stevia, so I feel like it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna like mix this up because I feel like this is like mostly the like wet ingredients or whatever. It says to mix it all together though, but I don't know, just think in here a little bit. Okay, that's all mixed pretty well. Then I need half a teaspoon of salt. Y'all, I literally just made the freaking fire alarm go off. Like, are you kidding me? There it is again. <sighs> that went off like four times. I'm not sure if it's gonna go off again, so. Gonna just continue, I guess. Salt. Okay. My heart is racing. I was like running and like waving my towel. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Okay, one third cup of flour. I used oat flour again. And then two teaspoons of babel, babel, 
baking powder, which I also mixed in pre this again. <sighs> Two teaspoons of cinnamon, just gonna give it a dash. Okay, I think that's everything, hopefully. So I'm gonna whisk all of this together again. And I'll read to you what the recipe says while I'm whisking. It says, this pie will be a bit delicate, less firm without the final ingredient option, which was the ground flax or extra cornstarch. I'm literally so annoyed, that has to stop. Like, it's not that smoky. Ugh, can I not even freaking cook? Nothing's burning, I checked. All right, let's continue. Then I put it in, this is crazy. I was able to unplug one, not the other, because it's connected by like wire. It's probably gonna go off again. I literally had to put a t-shirt on because I'm sweating from running upstairs. But I'm so close to being done. In fact, I don't want to use the oven anymore, so I'm gonna try to make this freaking pumpkin pie in like my, um, what do you call it, like the mini oven things? Toaster oven. So I'm just spraying it with canola oil, and then I'm pouring it in. Who knows if this will work. At this point, I'm overcooking, y'all. It's probably the fire department coming for me. And then I'm just gonna put that one in the toaster oven for like 30 minutes. Ooh, on 400 degrees. Probably gonna do lower and longer. Okay, so I took the muffins out of the oven a little bit early because the oven was set a lot higher for the roast than it needed to be for these. So they look pretty done to me. I don't have a toothpick to do the test, but like, I don't know, they feel like soft, but they're like, look like that on the top. So I'm not gonna try one yet. I'm gonna let them cool down. And I have, like you probably can't see it here, but my lovely boyfriend Kyle made a photo backdrop with, for me, like with literally like rustic wood and I'm in love with it. So obviously the camera's gonna have to eat first before I eat. Now we're still waiting for the pumpkin pie thing and the roast, which is the freaking cause of my freaking fire alarm going off a million times. I can't get over it. Okay, I finally took the roast out and it does look like I should have painted it with more gravy like in between, but I obviously didn't. So I'm gonna let this sit and cool off for a little bit under the freaking fan thing. So hopefully my alarm doesn't go off again. But I think that it's still gonna be like pretty done. Maybe the cauliflower might be a little crunchy, but I'm okay with that. And obviously you guys probably don't have the same problem as me living in a tiny apartment where the air can't really flow anywhere. So hopefully you can cook yours longer than me. Also took the pumpkin thing out and I'm putting it in the fridge right now just to cool off. And okay, I'm honestly a little bit nervous because I showed you the pumpkin in the fridge and it like does not seem to be hardening. So it feels like it's like gooey still. I like cooked it the amount of time it said and the like temperature it said. I'm wondering if it's because I did it in the toaster oven, but also it's smaller so it should be like heated faster. Am I wrong? I don't know, but we're gonna go ahead and cut the cauliflower first while that sits in the fridge a little bit longer. So let's do that. Okay, it honestly looks amazing. Still a little steamy, which is okay. Um, I poured a little bit more of the gravy on like two minutes ago, just using a spoon and grabbing it from like the stew around it. And I feel like this is gonna be hard to cut into, so I'm actually using a big girl knife. Oh wait, this is, oh my God, this is so soft. I'm so pumped about this. Okay, this might not have been a fail. I'm gonna put it on a plate and I'll show you once I have everything over here. Okay, a little piece fell off so I'm gonna eat it. Mmm, I love cow bar. And then I'm just gonna like spoon some of the vegetables onto my plate, which also look amazing. Girlie's eating good this week. I honestly love that I expect everything to go wrong because then when it goes right, I am like so flippin' ecstatic right now. Like this cauliflower is perfectly soft. I did not expect that at all. Okay, I'm just gonna take a bite from the pan because I have to. Are you flipping kidding me? Wow. Mm. The gravy tastes like real like turkey gravy. It's so good, dude. I should just make a cooking channel now. 
I'm getting so good. Okay, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for the pumpkin. While I'm waiting for the pumpkin stuff to harden, I literally ate all of the vegetables on this side. A few were on the plate for like the pretty picture, but OMG. I'm so hungry. Okay, I took the pumpkin thing out anyway. It probably looks good to you, but when I touch it, it like sinks. So I'm just gonna cut a square because I'm impatient and I wanna put it in the picture, but then I'll put it back in the freezer, honestly. This could be bad. Like it doesn't even cut, it's still liquid. What do I do? I'm so frustrated because that turned out, the stew turned out so much better than I thought. And then I bragged too soon because the pumpkin is not. Well, I'm just gonna take a bite of it from the pan. So that tastes so good. Maybe it will harden. I'm not gonna get my hopes up yet, but I am gonna take a picture of this sucker and then chow. All right, this is the final meal. The cauliflower roast with gravy and then the vegetable mix. So it had potatoes, carrots, zucchini, and onion, and then I added mushroom. And then this is the pumpkin bar. It's a little gooey on the side, but kind of hardened over here. And then this is the cornbread muffin, which I feel like these actually aren't gonna be good. They're almost like hard. So if they're bad, I kind of don't wanna take them to work tomorrow. But I'm gonna try it all for you right now, even though I already kind of tried a couple, whatever. All right, let's do this. Okay, I wanna try the muffin because that's really what I haven't tried yet. Frick, I feel like it's not supposed to do that. It's like sticking to the paper. Isn't that like a bad sign? Whatever. This isn't that good. Pretty plain. I'm a little disappointed, Caitlin Shoemaker. I honestly don't know if I'll bring these to work. Like they do look good, but it doesn't taste that much like cornbread. Like I think I needed maybe more sweetener. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. You saw me take a bite of this veggies fresh and they're so good. I can't get over the gravy. Like that's the best part. Okay, and let's take a bite of the pumpkin bar. Like it does taste like pumpkin pie filling. I just think that I really do need to like leave it in the freezer a little bit longer because it is so soft. And I know the blogger said it's gonna be like a soft texture, but I didn't expect it to be this soft. So maybe I do just wait a little bit longer. Honestly, I'm not gonna keep like videoing and drying. So keep a look out in the description if it gets better. But honestly, the cauliflower roast is like 10 out of 10 the best. I know that it doesn't actually like replace like a turkey roast, if you're looking for more like substance or like protein heavy type of meal for Thanksgiving, they do have recipes online where you can make your own like tofu roast with like stuff in the center, or like mashed potatoes and stuffing and stuff. But they also have brands that make them frozen for you. Like I know Tofurky or however you say that makes their own like whole roast that you just stick in the oven for a few hours. So super easy for vegans if you like don't wanna make your own. But honestly, this cauliflower alternative is so good and so healthy, like so much better for you. I'm not even much of a cornbread person in general, but I was actually gonna make mashed potatoes for you guys, which would have turned out so much better because you literally just boil potatoes, mash them and add like almond milk and like salt and pepper, maybe some vegan butter if you wanna spice it up a little bit. That would have been like too easy though. So I wanted to like up my game a little bit and do like something different like cornbread. But I wouldn't exactly say that that was like a super success. Definitely not a fail. I didn't like burn it and it's not terrible. I'm just like not the biggest fan. It's kind of bland to be honest. But I think I like did all the steps right and took it out right. I'm just like not impressed with the recipe, I guess. But honestly, I wonder how many people actually make cornbread for Thanksgiving. I feel like it's more of like a chili side, like what we're using it for tomorrow for work. But whatever, it's still like a fall food. And then the pumpkin one. I mean, I'm impressed because it is very good. Again, just the texture is odd, but just like the roast, it's like a really healthy recipe altogether. So not mad about it. I'm still gonna eat it all week. So what are you gonna do? All right, hopefully y'all don't blame me for any of this not being like 10 out of 10. I'm just being honest with y'all. I could have lied and said everything was perfect, you know, but that ain't like me. So if you're taking anything from this video, it's definitely make the cauliflower roast and then keep watching my videos to find out what else I try for those honest reviews. I'll also link all the recipes below for all of these. 
just in case you want to try any of them especially the gravy man like you got to try the gravy all right thanks for watching um sorry that my fire alarm went off a million freaking times and i almost burned down my freaking building apparently also i looked in my oven after i took the roast out and i think some of the broth got on the bottom and that's probably what was like burning and like smelling up the place and smoking but also our like oven has done that before like turned the fire alarms off so i don't know i'm not surprised annoyed yes surprised now anywho thank you for watching and happy thanksgiving if you're not subscribed and you like this video please click the red button below i would really appreciate it i love you all and i will see you next video bye guys